that have happened and been in the news, they happened, one of them happened a few months ago, but it's all been in the news a whole lot this week. And if we were meeting as a church, we would usually talk about these things, um, usually around communion, I would talk about it, um, and, uh, and then we would have a pastoral prayer um, about, uh, about the events that are going on in our society that's causing people a lot of uh, hurt, a lot of anger, uh, and so forth. And so uh, that's what I want to do this morning, is just kind of address this a little bit, and uh, have a word of prayer, and then after I pray, um, Samantha is going to greet us and have a prayer, and then we'll go into worship. So this beginning section will be a little longer than, uh, than what we've had. And, and what I'm talking about is um, the case of Ahmad um, Aubrey, who was shot in Brunswick, Georgia, I think it was back in February, and uh, some citizens just uh, chased him. It, he, it, he looked like he really wasn't doing anything but jogging. Um, and, uh, and they chased him, and a confrontation took place, and they shot him. He was an unarmed black man. So you had an unar unarmed black man shot uh, to death by, um, uh, by two white uh, citizens. And, um, and then nothing was done. It seemed like there was a cover-up, and then and now finally, just last week, uh, the two were arrested after there was basically a, na a national outrage uh, against that. And, um, and so that's been on a lot of people's mind. I've been in a lot of conversations with, with some of my African-American friends, and they're hurt. They're, they're like, here we go again. What's going on in our society? And then uh, this week, there was an article in the paper of a, of a Miss uh, Brianna Taylor in Louisville, Kentucky, who uh, the police uh, were looking for someone, and they busted into her apartment, um, and I guess her and her boyfriend's apartment, or it could be her husband. I'm, I'm not sure about that, but they busted into the apartment and and they didn't announce themselves the police are here and so they thought they were being invaded and so the guy in the apartment shot one time and then the police shot uh, what I read was about 20 some odd rounds and they hit Brianna 20 time, uh, eight times and uh, killed her and she was an EMT so she had been on the front lines fighting COVID and was just asleep in her bed African-American lady and uh, the police came in and sh and shot her eight times and so um, that one is that one you know from the time it happened till now it, it received a lot of press not like um, Aubrey which happened back in February and and uh, and just now really getting the press that it deserves and so in my conversations with African Americans what I'm sensing is is just a deep hurt of what in the world's going on I'm tired of talking about reconciliation when we keep seeing these things um, uh, happening and people uh, are being are being killed for for no reason um, regardless of what Ahmad may have done or not did, he didn't deserve the death penalty uh, for that particular act. And he was just, you know, walking through a neighborhood that, quote, wasn't his. Years ago, we had a similar thing here in Franklin happen. My next door neighbor, an African-American realtor, was driving through uh, West Haven uh, showing a client a house. And uh, he noticed a guy in a pickup truck started to follow him. And when they got to an intersection, the guy drove his truck around, stopped him. Um, confronted him with what are you doing here this is not your neighborhood and uh, and then he when he came home he was still shaken uh, from that um, and so that happens here and and uh, where you know I, I told some people you know if I walk through the wrong neighborhood the quote wrong neighborhood I'm lost uh, but it seemed like if a minority walks through the wrong neighborhood they're up to no good and um, and that's and that's just not right and so um, the, and so, you know, again, what I'm hearing from people is just this tremendous amount of hurt. You know, I've been doing a lot of thinking because basically the last 20, 25 years of my life, I've been, I've been trying to um, fight for and uh, be involved in racial reconciliation things, uh, trying to build those bridges. And um, <laughs> to be honest, there was a moment this week after some of the conversations, it's like, man, I've been doing this for 20 years and I don't know a thing. I don't even know where to begin. I, I don't know anything about how we how we heal um, the uh, our past uh, and present racial things going on, and so I want you to know and everybody else to know that I'm still committed to trying to learn, uh, but I'm feeling like I'm having to start all over again because it's like 20 years later, it doesn't seem to be any better than it was uh, 20 years ago, in spite of all of these movements um, toward this. And so, and as a church, we you know we're committed to this. Uh, we're committed to. Uh, trying to uh, to heal the wounds and trying to build reconciliation and, um, and and all of that. And so our hearts go out to everyone who's been affected by this. Uh, tomorrow, on, mon on Monday, uh, Kevin and I record the actual floods of justice um, things. 
uh, the podcast, and uh, it's usually up on Wednesday. And so tomorrow we'll be recording the next episode of Floods of Justice, where we're going to talk about this more in depth. And uh, our own Ray Boy Sanchez is going to join us at, um, and to talk about her view, uh, being an African American woman, uh, and and her frustration with uh, and hurt of what's going on and how it continues to go on. So, so make sure you um, you know you, you tune into that when it comes Wednesday. We'll post it. And I think that's going to be a good discussion and uh, hopefully an eye-opening discussion for those of us who are in the dominant culture who, who aren't, don't seem to be affected by these things as much as we should be and uh, not willing to talk about it. And so I do want to make this one statement because I think this is a statement our church believes uh, strongly. And, uh, and I just want to get it out there. Uh, and, then, uh, and then I want to pray, kind of do a pastoral prayer over, uh, over this situation. And the statement is this, and, and most of you who hear this are going to go, yeah, Kevin, that's common sense. We all know it. Uh, but I think it just needs to be re reset at, at this particular time. And so the statement is this, racism is a sin, white supremacy is evil, and white privilege is a fact. And we have to all acknowledge those three, I think, three truths, um, that racism is a sin, white supremacy is evil, and, and white privilege is a fact. And I think, uh, for me, the first step in trying to do any type of healing when it comes to rec racial reconciliation is admitting the white privilege that I have. Um, that, yeah, things are set up in my favor. Um, I benefit from this, um, from the way the culture is, because the culture was based on WASP, white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And, uh, and that's kind of still how it is. And so these problems now are at the systemic level. They're at the personal level. Uh, but at the systemic level, uh, all of those still exist, and we have to continue to fight and recommit ourselves to fight uh, against the injustice of, uh, of, of racism and white supremacy and admit um, that from the white context, admit that, uh, that we do have privilege. And so we need to use our privilege to help those who don't have that, that privilege. But anyway, so let me pray, and then um, um, Samantha will give us a greeting. So let me pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we love you, and uh, we know uh, that you are the God of all people. Uh, your word makes it clear um, that uh, in Christ there is neither Jew nor Gentile, black or white or Hispanic, um, male or female, that we're all one. And, but, Lord, we still live in a society that is reaping um, the consequences of our sin uh, from what we did uh, to the Native Americans, at the founding of our country, and then the, the 400 plus years of slavery, and then the Civil War just being really 150 years, years or so ago, and, uh, and then the Jim Crow and the Civil Rights Movement and all these things, Lord, but yet here we are again today uh, mourning um, the loss of, um, of black lives uh, who, who weren't doing anything that justified being, uh, being killed. Um, and so Lord, we confess our sins of racism. We confess uh, that uh, we, uh, we, while we may not consider ourselves white supremacists, we, we kind of benefit from it some uh, in the dominant group. And so, Lord, may we tear down those walls. May we get rid of that in our heart. And, uh, Lord, may we uh, take the steps that we can do uh, to bring healing uh, to our community and to bring justice to our community and to our country. And uh, we pray this, and oh, and we pray for the families of those who are directly involved in this, Lord, uh, the hurt that they feel. And we just lift them up in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.